Hello everybody and welcome to the Alien vs Predator Galaxy YouTube channel. This is Corporal Hicks and we're here to talk about Alien 5. And no, it isn't a new piece of concept art or a new tweet from Neil Blomkamp's film, but a rather surprising announcement that Walter Hill has written a treatment for a fifth Alien film. Now, I've already posted twice about this on the website, but I also wanted to do a motion tracker video on it for our YouTube audience. Now, unless you're pretty well versed in the behind the scenes of the production of the Alien series, Walter Hill is a name you might not be intimately familiar with. And Walter Hill has a great deal of history with the Alien series. It was ultimately him and his production partners, David Geiler and Gordon Carroll, who got Alien made. Their company, Brandywine, played a huge part in getting the film up on the big screen. But Walter Hill is also a writer and director himself. He's quite notable for having written and directed The Warriors, he was at one point attached to direct Alien, but along with his writing partner David Geiler, they took several passes on rewriting Dan O'Bannon's script for Alien. Now there's a whole load of drama surrounding that conflict and writing credits, but ultimately the inclusion of Ash within the film is thanks to Walter Hill and David Geiler. And you can find out more about that drama in some of the behind the scenes stuff like Charles Delosarica's fantastic documentaries and J.W. Rinsler's really amazing Making of Alien book that came out last year. Very worth the money, go buy it, and a very interesting story actually. They would also go on to find James Cameron and get Aliens off the ground, but despite actually being credited as producers on all of the Alien films, Hill and Guyler's last involvement with the series was Alien 3. Now, Alien 3's development hell is another story in itself, but with a looming shoot date and no script, Hilton Gala would use all the previous drafts that they'd commissioned to assemble the eventual scripts that would be filmed. Say what you will about the finished product of Alien 3, but when I went back and read those older drafts of Alien 3, I had a completely different appreciation for how well Alien 3 actually turned out. But after that, that was the end of Brandywine's involvement with the series. Everything after that would just be contractual credits, basically. Now that is why news of Walter Hill having written a take on Alien 5 came as such a huge surprise. Speaking to Empire Magazine last week for the latest issue of Empire's Heroes specials, Sigourney Weaver told the magazine that a year and a half ago she received a 50-page treatment for an Alien 5 from Walter Hill. Unfortunately, she didn't provide any story details, but Sigourney did express an uncertainty at returning as Ripley again, telling Empire that, I don't know, Ridley has gone in a different direction. Maybe Ripley has done her part? She deserves a rest. Now this uncertainty is a complete turnabout from the excitement that Sigourney had often expressed regarding Neil Blomkamp's attempt at an 8 5. In fact, Sigourney had such an impact on Blumkamp that he put Ripley into the story. Originally, Ripley wouldn't have played a part in Neil Blumkamp's Alien 5 at all. It wasn't until the two worked together on Chappie, where they talked about the project, that Sigourney convinced Blumkamp to rework his concept to include Ripley. Despite strong fan response being responsible for getting Blumkamp's Alien 5 greenlit, it would seemingly stall thanks to interference from Ridley Scott. Perhaps Sigourney's seeming lack of interest is just dejection at the way their previous attempt at Alien 5 turned out? I wouldn't blame her. And then following Sigourney's comments, Walter Hill and Brandywine reached out to Sci-Fi Wire to issue a statement regarding the news. Now again, there's no story details, but here's what Walter Hill had to say. Sigourney, as she has from the very beginning, is being too modest about her proven ability to pull off the idea, which is to tell a story that scares the pants off your date, kicks the ass of a new xenomorph, and conducts a meditation on both the universe of the Alien franchise and the destiny of the character of Lieutenant Ellen Ripley. What details we can glean come from the cover page of the treatment. Uh, Brandywine also sent Sci-Fi Wire this picture of the treatment. It's a little hard to see, but Alien vs Predator Galaxy was also provided with a copy of the title page, which also has David Geiler's name attached to it, where you can more clearly see the taglines. In space, no one can hear you scream. In space, no one can hear you dream. And at the bottom are two quotes. All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream, which is by Edgar Allan Poe, and War is Hell by William Sherman. The inclusion of quotes on their title page is, is pretty usual for a Hill and Guyler script, at least in terms of Alien. Their various drafts of Alien also included quotes from W.H. Horden and a favourite of mine from Joseph Conrad, We live as we dream, alone. And there's an interesting prevalence of dreaming on that title page alone perhaps hinting that dreams would play a prominent part in Hill's incarnation of Alien 5? Would that have been his answer on how to deal with Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection? While dreams have been a frequent tool used in the Alien series, 
the expanded universe more so, the idea of writing Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection off as dreams or nightmares Ripley has had in cryosleep has never been an idea that has sat really well with me. Also of interest is the date on the title page. Now Sigourney had said she received a treatment a year and a half ago, while this title page provided to ourselves in Sci-Fi Wire says March 13th, indicating that work did continue on this treatment past it being shown to Sigourney. Now that said, I wouldn't get any hopes up about seeing this treatment get made, or not any time soon at least. As we understand it, things are still chaos at 20th Century Studios following the Disney merger, and from what I remember, the new studio is going to have a limited output under Disney management. Would they really use one of their slots for an Alien film, given the series' diminishing returns even under the huge name that is Ridley Scott? And while it seems that 20th Century Studios' current head of production Steve Aspel is a fan of the series, Scott Free and Ridley Scott still have a great deal of creative control over the series. And the scuttlebutt that we've heard is that he played a huge part in getting Blomkamp's project killed. Would he really allow another Alien 5 he's seemingly not been involved with to get made? Personally, I'm at a point where I would like to see the series continue post Alien 3 and move away from Ripley, or any established characters. I'd like to see a soft reboot where we continue within the existing continuity, but establish new characters and a new story direction that sees the films explore the universe following the events of Alien 3. Also, despite how much I actually enjoyed Alien Covenant, I think I'm also at the point where I'm not sure I trust Ridley Scott to continue telling Alien stories. He seems too bored with the actual Alien part of the Alien stories. How do you feel about this latest round of Alien 5 news? Are you still reserving judgement until you know more about the actual plots? Are you like me and would like to see the Alien series continue in a new direction? Or are you still holding on to Ripley and are keen to see her return to the big screen? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, please stick with Alien vs Predator Galaxy for the latest Alien and Predator news. You can find the hub of our activity on avpgalaxy.net. There are various socials that you can see on the screen now. And also please head back to our channel page and check out some of our other videos, including lore, editorial pieces and let's plays of the various games, as well as our podcasts. Thank you everybody for watching.